everyone. This is Crystal from Open to Public HVAC Parts, and today we're going to talk about the basic order of operations for a residential gas furnace. Now, why would this be important to learn before you work on a unit? Well, for obvious reasons, you would need to know how it functions before you can start diagnosing the issue. This can be extremely helpful when you are trying to go through and figure out what is wrong, what could be eluding you. And so for this purpose in the store, what I do is I create a diagnostic checklist. So let's go over how a furnace functions and then we can start looking at our checklist for what could possibly be wrong. Now this is just a generalized operations list. We're going to touch on what happens here um, before we get through our one through six steps, but we'll kind of gloss over that. We can get more in depth later, but for now, this will just give you an idea of what you're looking for and where the issue could be as it say stops working. So the very first thing that should happen is your vent motor or your inducer motor should come on. Your blower motor and your inducer motor should not come on at the same time. So as that inducer motor comes on, obviously it's going to be a safety thing because we're dealing with gas. So noxious fumes, any sort of combustion, that needs to be vented out of your unit up through the roof. Once that comes on, your pressure switch, in most cases, are going to be under negative pressure. So when this comes on, it's going to pull that negative pressure through this tube, and it's going to close the line that's going through the pressure switch. Once that pulls through, obviously path of least resistance, that low voltage is gonna go through that line and it's going to go through a series of switches. Your high limit, your limit switch, sometimes they'll be on your blower. Um, you have rollout limit switches on your burners that are manual. And once it goes and most people, their limit switches are in line. So it has to go through all of these limit switches before it gets to the point of your control board, sending voltage before it gets to the point of your control board, sending power to your gas valve. So the very first thing, as we mentioned, inducer motor. The second thing is your pressure system which is your pressure switch and hose, your inducer motor, and your flue pipe that goes up to the roof. Next in line, we've got your igniter or sparker, if you've got one of those on your board here, like this one. And once that comes on, it's going to stay on for a little bit until it shuts off. And once it shuts off, the board sends the voltage to your gas valve to open and allow the gas through. Yes, you heard me correctly. The igniter shuts off before the gas valve goes through and that igniter is burning hot. So it's going to still be extremely hot once that gas goes through to ignite. So from there, as we said, after the igniter lights, the gas valve comes on, stays open and lights Next, we go over to, it's gonna light up, go all the way across those burners to your flame sensor. And there's some really cool science behind flame sensors, but we'll get into that later. Just know that the flame sensor is going to send the tiniest, tiniest millivolt back to the board and that board knows that everything is good and we're going to keep it on. So from there, it's done all of these things before it signals the blower motor and blower wheel to come on. 
So once that blower motor comes on, we've completed the stage of everything's good to go and now we're going to blow air into your home. With that being said, now we can start to look at these problems and uh, this checklist to know what could be going wrong. What was the initial problem? Say, for example, my igniter isn't coming on, right? It's not glowing. So, okay, igniter. Well, what happens before the igniter comes on? Well, the inducer motor has to come on, the pressure switch has, it, you know, has to pull closed before the board can send the signal to the igniter to come on. So somewhere between steps one and steps three, something's off. You can stop right there because you know it has something to do with one of these items. And that's exactly why we need to learn how these work. And I know it sounds annoying, but if you, why not if you're putting the work into doing this, why wouldn't you learn how it worked? It would make your life so much easier. So another really great question to ask yourself is when was the system, your indoor, your outdoor, your thermostat, when was it last worked on? Um, has it functioned in all settings since it was worked on or since the thermostat was replaced. If a technician diagnosed the problem, did he give you a written diagnosis? And this is something a technician won't offer up to you on his own. You need to ask for that. Request it if they've already been out because legally when you request a written diagnostic From a technician that's come out to your home. They have to give it to you So make sure you get that if you're planning on repairing the issue yourself Really important thing that a lot of people fail to check even if they know what they're doing and they've worked on a unit before is what is the blinking light on your control board telling you? Because it will blink a code when it fails. If it doesn't blink a code when it fails, we can go to the fact that it's the control board. Now, it's a whole different story if you've popped a fuse on the control board and it's not working correctly or if the light doesn't come on at all, if nothing comes on at all, you know it's probably something to do with power or a popped fuse, at which point you're going to start looking at other things when that happens. So is there a blinking light and what is it telling you? So if you did self-diagnose with say YouTube or something like that, Go back to see what you did. Really make sure you know what you did in order to reverse what you could have possibly done when you repaired or replaced a part. Did you replace your thermostat? If you did, did you test it in all functions? Was it working on fan on? Was it working in heat? Was it working in cool? Make sure that you check all of this before you immediately go to the system. And a lot of people like to blame the control board when they haven't properly done this checklist to make sure. So make sure that your thermostat is sending signal for fan on, heat, or cool, and see if it works in any of these functions. Did you change the battery in your thermostat? And these are, I know they sound dumb and basic, but it, that's what we're doing. We're going back to figure out what the root of the problem was to begin with. Uh, this is a very important one. Does anything come on in your indoor unit? If it does, does anything come on in your outdoor unit? Does your thermostat come on? So first and foremost, make sure that anything is coming on at all. If 
nothing is coming on at all, you want to check your power or you want to check your transformer and just see if any of those are causing a problem. So here's our checklist for what should be coming on. Inducer motor comes on first, check, okay? Control board lights come on, check. The igniter or sparker comes on, check, so on and so forth. List it out for yourself to figure out again where that problem is stemming from. And right here we've said in what order do these parts come on. So again, if your inducer motor and your blower motor come on at the same time, is that within our order of operations? No, no it is not. So clearly it's got something going on here. Does your furnace light? Make sure that you're actually seeing a flame because if you're not seeing a flame, a flame sensor is not going to be your problem. So does your igniter glow, etc. It all goes back to our rule of basics here. So save yourself the problem. Really look at this. Um, as I've said before, does your outdoor unit come on? Check your cooling, make sure that's happening. So another, and, and this sounds so dumb, but it is incredible how many times I've had people have this issue, is, well, I've already reset the power. Do I need to reset the power again? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Put everything back together the way it was after you think you've fixed the problem, or if you're still trying to diagnose it, make sure you reset the power. And the reason behind that is it could still be in a lockout or purge mode. So say you put everything back together and immediately your blower motor and your inducer motor come on, it's still in a purge cycle. So make sure you reset the power, even if you think you've done it a million times, just do it. So once you've done that, did anything change? Has the code changed on your board? And this is something very important to pay attention to. Um, was there a popped fuse? So say you've put everything back and then all of a sudden you turn it back on and pop, another popped fuse. Obviously we've got a short somewhere. Does your breaker trip? as soon as you turn on your heat or as soon as your indoor unit comes on. These are all very important things that a technician is looking for. So you as the homeowner can protect yourself by knowing the basic order of operations. So make sure you pay attention to this and I sincerely hope this has been helpful for you. If there's something you feel like I haven't covered or something you'd like to know more about, just leave a question in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as possible. Thank you for joining us again today and I hope you have a wonderful day.